Welcome! Thank you for being here. I'm Katie. This is my first video. Today I'm painting Stella the Beagle and she's going to be wearing a nice little bandana. I'm using acrylic paint for Stella and doing lots of thin layers to build up the color. There are a lot of different techniques for painting. This one definitely takes a little longer with all the thin layers, but it's a good way to get really blended colors and tones. Overall, this painting took a little over seven hours. Uh, I have a tendency to keep adding things and changing my mind when I'm painting, and my hope is that with more practice I can get faster. Uh, also, sometimes, you know, as other areas of the painting evolve, I can see if certain elements aren't really working and kind of take a break, step back, see it from another angle that definitely makes it take a little longer. Ah, mustache dog! Uh, one thing about acrylic paint is that it dries really fast, which is good and bad. Uh, good because you can put some color down a few minutes later, just paint right over it if you want to. Bad because your paint might dry out on the palette, or the dried paint could create a weird texture on the canvas you, did, you didn't want. Um, there are some really beautiful things you can do when the paint is wet. You can't really do when it's dry, so. I know with practice I've gotten better with that and also better with color mixing. Sometimes I still accidentally add way too much like red or blue to the paint and then get some funky color that's totally wrong. I'll end up with way too much of the color I needed because I had to keep adding other bits of paint to get exactly what I was looking for. Uh, I'm sure other artists can relate throwing out a bunch of paint because you made the wrong color. But a trick I learned for getting accurate colors is actually to use the eyedropper tool on a photo to pick out individual colors. Like something that looks white might actually be like a light blue or tan. And using the eyedropper tool helps you single out that exact color in an area which can be hard to differentiate when it's surrounded by other colors. Very helpful for something like a pet portrait when you need to create the texture and the fur, depth on the face, and you need it to be realistic with shadows and highlights and, you know, things are almost never black and white. Ooh, lesson for the day. Things in life are rarely black and white. Oh, dogs are just so good. I got to meet Stella a few times, the sweetest pumpkin, and her parents are great too. I'm biased because they're family. Uh, fun fact, Stella's humans were the flower girl and ring bearer at my wedding. They are adults. Uh, my family and my siblings are such a big part of my life that it was important to me to have them all be involved in the wedding in some way. So we had sisters as bridesmaids, you know, brothers as the officiant, another brother as a witness, and yeah, there's a lot of us. But the wedding was rad. Nice to have all our favorite people together. Even nicer when you're all dancing and eating cupcakes. Planning the wedding was a lot of work. I'll get into that in more detail in another video, but yeah. My husband and I did all the planning. We're both artists, so we made a bunch of the decor. We're really intentional with everything. We were really hands-on. Uh, for example, we made a seating chart for dinner, and I know it's easier to have open seating, but since there were only a certain number of tables and chairs, you know, we wanted to make sure there was like a good flow, no one was stuck in an awkward seat or anything. Well, a few weeks before the wedding, my husband and I were finalizing some things, and I was folding up napkins to put at each of the tables, and you know, since the tables were all a little different, they didn't have the same number of people at each one. We all needed different numbers of napkins. Well, after like eight plus months of being so immersed in wedding planning, and probably also just the type of personality I have, I was actually able to list from memory every person's seat placement. <laughs> well, there are probably a few. I didn't get the exact seat right, but definitely everyone at each table. You can ask Austin, my husband. It was fun. And now I'm not sure I should be bragging about this. Let's just say it was for science, you know, 
to determine how many napkins were needed at each table. I'm not weird. But yeah, highly recommend having an adult ring bearer and flower girl. In fact, you can use Drew and Meredith. Message me, I'll give you their info. So, like I said, this is my first YouTube video. I'm hoping to make this a welcoming space to share my art and talk about art, talk about dogs, talk about whatever. You know, if you have questions about painting or weddings or pink hair or like napping or any of my other interests, just let me know. You know, cupcakes, women's rights, rescue kittens, I'm here for it. I also do commission pet portraits because pets are literally the best. Dogs, cats, bunnies, I love them all. I want to paint them all. Yeah, this is the first time I've recorded my process from start to finish. In the past, I've taken progress photos, but never a full video. It's very interesting. It's interesting to see the evolution of it. You know, how often I tend to go over the same spot with different colors or washes and slowly watch the depth emerging from the painting. I love watching process videos. Um, a lot of work really does go into making art, even a little 5x7 painting like this, and that's just not always apparent when you only see the finished product. But taking progress photos and videos is really helpful for someone like me because I get impatient really easily, and I need to be able to remind myself how far I've come and not to give up. You know, I might look at what's right in front of me and just think like, oh, I have so much left to do, or I just can't get the eyes and the nose to look right or whatever, but seeing how much progress I've already made and thinking how, you know, like this started as literally blank canvas and now I'm on my way to making something really cool. So that's not just for realistic art either. That goes for abstract art too. You know, you start with this blank canvas and with the tools you create something and it's a little part of you that's on the canvas. All the training I've had, you know, other paintings I've done, my memories, experiences, it all affects the things I do and the things I make in some way or another. And I really do put my a lot of myself into the paintings and the things I make. Um, that's why everything takes me so long. But if there are other impatient people out there, I see you. You're not alone. There's nothing wrong with you. We just have to try to keep things in perspective and, you know, not let the little whispering goblins on our shoulders convince us to start a new project before this one is done. Feels really good to have a completed painting and it'll feel really good when I can give this to Meredith, uh, who lives really far away from me, so people need to stop living so far away, okay? But yeah, speaking of getting the nose to look right, noses are very hard. A lot of dogs have really dark noses and it's a challenge to give them depth and shape on a 2D surface while also kind of matching colors and showing subtle highlights and shadows. And I feel like it would be helpful to just practice painting noses just everywhere I go, make it rain noses. But you know, it's also okay if it doesn't match perfectly. It's not a photograph, it's something handmade and sometimes just more interesting to give it a little flair, make it your own and not have everything match perfectly. These are all just things I have to keep reminding myself of so I can chill out when I'm in the middle of making something. Hey, person who memorized 70 individual seat placements, chill out. After making art for a while and studying composition, you know, you kind of learn when to know if a piece is finished or not. A lot of it is about feelings, like does it feel unbalanced, does my eye naturally go to one thing or another, is it distracting, you know, how much detail do I want to add to this painting. Um, you could spend forever adding detail, adding little hairs, tweaking things, so to learn to listen to your gut. This is very serious, you guys. Ooh, another lesson. Listen to your gut. Doesn't hurt to ha get some feedback from other people too, even if you totally disagree with what they said. You know, at art school, we'd have critiques for our work and 
some people might point something out I hadn't even considered and that's nice too. But yeah, um, I really appreciate everyone for being here. Let me know if you like this painting. Let me know what I should do next. Um, I'm excited to share more art projects. It's not all paintings either. There's some Barbie art coming up. For anyone who was at my wedding, you saw, but I made Barbie versions of me and my husband and had them next to our cake, kind of like instead of a cake topper. So I'm definitely putting together a video about that, but there are other Barbie-based art projects in the works. I love Barbies. I love Barbies as a kid. I still love Barbies. Why stop playing with them? Final lesson of the day. Never stop doing the things you love, like playing with Barbies, as long as it's not hurting anybody. Thank you so much for watching. Stick around till the end of the video for a nice little surprise. Love you. Bye.